Now, so let's talk about the men a little bit. You've already seen uh, Max Immelman in his uh, Fokker E1, and you know that the Immelman turn, which we still use today, was named after him. On the left, you see Oswald Bilka. He and Max Immelman were in the same unit together, and they started flying uh, the Fokkers about the same time, and they were kind of friendly rivals. Uh, Oswald Bilka went on to become the father of German fighter aviation, and we're going to hear more about him soon. But uh, notice that they're heralds. Notice that both of them have the, the blue max at their throat. This is the right here. And they were uh, among the very first junior officers to ever win the Port de Marie. Uh, I think it had been won by a submarine commander for outstanding exploits by then. But almost all awards of the Port de Marie up to the time that they were awarded the medal were to general officers and royalty. So it was pretty shocking to see uh, junior officers win that medal. And they were, uh, pictures of them and were, were shown on almost every newspaper in Germany. So at a time when uh, the, the trench warfare was horrible and, and, and had a tens and thousands of casualties, the ray of hope or, or beam of light in this, in this horrible scenario was um, the men, the, the new knights of the sky, the fighters. And when uh, you know the, the, these people were publicized in the papers, here's a couple of articles from the New York Times talking about Bilka. This was before America even got in the war. So this became world news. So we got to the second generation of fighters, uh, and they were uh, designed during the war, but they were designed really without the benefit of the combat experience. In other words, they were being built and, and brought into production at the same time the, uh, the first fighter planes were uh, in combat. So they weren't able to really take much advantage of the, of the experience being gained. And here, generally now, the, the tactics have moved to several aircraft working together, at this time, the French formed the world's first fighter squadron. But the lone wolf fighter pilots, you know, one person stalking the prey, uh, were still very, very common at this point. And uh, the British responded with the de Havilland II and later on the uh, FV-8 uh, single-engine pusher aircraft, the idea being you didn't need a synchronizing gear. And at the time when they were designed, they didn't have that. And the French had uh, their, their Newports, the, the Newport 10 was a two-seat aircraft. And this one has been, uh, uh, they've added a gun, a flexible gun for the gunner and a, a fixed overwing gun for the pilot. Some of them were unarmed. And then a, a small version of that was the first fighter plane uh, that the French designed and built that, that actually saw combat. And, it, and it's the Newport 11, and they had the overwing gun, not synchronized. And uh, the Newport went on to have a whole family of airplanes. And I'm putting the, uh, the, the, the early biplane Fokkers <coughs> in the second generation because they were basically the biplane versions of the Ein Eindeckers, and they were pretty primitive. And here is Jean Navari. And I'm using him as, as an example of the second generation fighter ace. Jean Navari, uh, for a while, became the French ace of aces. And he is the prototypical bad boy fighter pilot. If you've you know seen like Top Gun or some of these other pictures, and where the the, the uh, fighter pilots were, were bad boys, you know, uh, he, John Navari really was. He was incorrigible. He didn't like authority at all. And uh, as as his uh, commander once said, they were just getting ready. Uh, they would just get ready to uh, give him a, you know, court-martial him and reprimand him for some of his atrocious behavior. And then he'd have to turn it into a citation because he did something else wonderful. And if you, if you look at uh, what he's got on his head over here in the, when he's sitting here in the airplane, that's a silk stocking. Yes, it is exactly what you think it is. And I, knowing him, I'm sure he got it just the way you think he did. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and, and by the way, I, we have a, a, a 
biography for sale of him upstairs. If you if you really want to know about it, it's it's a lot of fun. And you can see he was in the Hall of Papers. Then the third generation of fighters came along, and this is really the first generation of aircraft design with the benefit of combat experience you know, to feed back into the, into the design requirements. And now, uh, we're, we're generally at this point, the tactics were squadron tactics, so uh, pilots working together. The, the, the unit leaders now started training their, their uh, pilots in the, in the unit tactics. The Germans now formed their first fighter squadrons. Uh, Oswald Bilke, the, as I told you earlier, was the uh, father of German fighter aviation. He had Bilke's Dicta, which I, re I reproduce here for you. Uh, and at this point, the lone wolf fighter pilot was still common. The, they did not have huge formations of aircraft, uh, so the lone wolf fighter pilot could still survive if he was good. And now you see uh, the Albatross uh, series came into play. And now you have a 160 horsepower engine, more power than these other aircraft had been having. Now the, the Albatross, for the first time, carried two synchronized guns. And you think, well, okay, why is that that important? Because gun jams were so frequent you know, uh, at that time. If you had one gun and it jammed, you were now defenseless. If you had two guns and one jam, you still had one. And uh, if both of them were working, then you had a lot of firepower. So the Albatross really, uh, which, which started reaching the squadrons in the August of 1916, uh, in, in really in, in numbers in, in September and October, really took technical superiority back to the Germans, and uh, now, uh, you know, this is the aircraft that the Red Baron uh, learned to be a fighter pilot in. He had been a, uh, 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 an observation aircraft uh, pilot, and before that an observer, and before that, uh, inf uh, sorry, a, a cavalryman. And these airplanes now uh, started getting into real serious air combat. Your combat became serious at this point. And this is the Albatross D5. Again, it's the next version in the in that series, but they're all very similar. This one's in a uh, the, the Australian War Memorial. It's preserved there. And there were some others as well. Uh, there were other German aircraft that were used the same, uh, what do you call it, uh, technology. At the bottom here, we see the Roland C2. Notice it's a two-seater, so it was the first two-seat fighter uh, that the Germans had. It wasn't necessarily designed that way at first, but uh, when they armed it effectively, and it was a very fast airplane for its time, they started using it that way. And uh, the French responded with the uh, new generations of Newport fighters. The one on the right, the Newport 23, was basically a Newport 17 with a different kind of gun synchronizer. This one on the right is shown as is flown in the, was by the Belgians. And now here are the British. And the Sopwith Strutter was the first uh, British two-seat fighter. The little Sopwith pup underneath it uh, was, again, just similar to the uh, Newport 11 was a small version of the Newport 10 two-seater. The Sopwith Pup was sort of derived from the, the Sopwith Strutter two-seater. And uh, they call it the Pup because it, they said it looked like the Strutter had a Pup. And uh, then later, you know, then you see the, the British uh, Sopwith triplane in the, in the re reproduction in the color photo. And it uh, was very similar to the uh, Pup, but it had a more powerful engine. And it had a triplane wing cellular. And that's, there's a whole other story about how that started a triplane craze in Germany. And I, I can tell that story, but that's a presentation in itself. And uh, here's a, a, a Faltz D3, another German third generation fighter. Used the same technology. Now here we come. Oswald Bilke, after scoring 40 victories and in, in, in being the Red Baron's mentor and teacher, was killed in action by, by a mid-air collision. He was not shot down, but he had a mid-air collision with one of his other men during a combat with uh, the British aircraft. Look at his funeral. This is, this is the funeral of royalty. He is a uh, junior officer with the Port Marine in a fighter base. And here's a picture of his funeral.
This is like uh, royalty. So this is how, how important the fighter pilot became in terms of the uh, national identity at a time when tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people were dying anonymously in the trenches.